When you create a new conversion action in your Google Ads account, you have the opportunity to set it as either a primary or secondary action for your account. Now, depending on your goals, one or the other might make more sense for you. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with primary versus secondary conversion actions, this video is for you. If you have no idea why you might use a secondary conversion action, this video is also for you. So today I want to walk you through where the setting is for primary versus secondary conversion actions in Google ads, talk about why you might use one or the other, and then give you some examples to get started. I want to start by showing you how to create a new conversion action in Google ads. So you can see where the primary versus secondary conversion action setting lives because it's a little bit hidden. So let's start up by going up to tools and settings and then conversions. We'll create a new conversion action to make things easy. I'm just going to choose website, add in the paid media pro site and click scan. And this setup might look a little bit different to some people, but the next thing I need to do is click add a conversion action manually. And now we get back to the normal set of conversion settings that we're used to seeing in Google ads. The first thing we need to do is choose a goal and action optimization. So we'll select the goal category from this list to make things easy. I'm just going to choose submit lead form. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the conversion action optimization options, which is quite a mouthful, has now shown up here with a little down arrow. So if I open this up, this is where the primary and secondary conversion actions live. I'm not going to worry about any of the other settings on the page because I really only want to focus on these two. You'll see the description here says for this goal, choose if this is a primary action for bidding optimization and reporting or a secondary action used for observation by default in the past any conversion action you created was effectively used as a primary conversion action, meaning that it was going to be used for bidding optimizations by Google's smart bidding algorithms. You can see in the green box down below, it says this is an account default goal, which is fine. And that this action will be optimized for and reported in the conversions column by default, and it will be used as a goal in your campaigns. Again, this is what the default for all conversion actions have been in the past. So if you choose a secondary action, you can see down in the blue box below, it says that submit lead form is still an account default goal, but that this action is marked secondary and will not be used for optimization by default and will only be reported on in the all conversions column. In just a second, I'm going to show you what that looks like in a Google ads account, but really quick while I'm in the conversion action section of the interface, I want to show you how you can adjust this for an existing conversion action. So for right now, I'm going to click cancel and go back to my original list of the conversions already set up in this account. This is just Joe and I's placeholder account for these videos. So most things are set up just by default, but let's use this book us to speak conversion action. You can see right now that it's set up as action optimization as primary, but if I wanted to change that, I could just click on the book us to speak link, head into edit settings, and then I would just jump up to the goal and action optimization section. I could change it to secondary and click save. I'm not going to do that because if we ever use this account, we would want this to be a primary action. So to show you what this looks like, I wanted to hop into an active client account. As you can see here, we have both the conversion and all conversion columns selected. And to see the difference between a conversion action set up as a primary and a secondary optimization point, I'm going to click segment conversions and segment by conversion action. And now I've scrolled all the way down to the bottom so that hopefully we don't have to blur quite as much. But in this view, you can see that there are six conversion actions in the account and the same ones are being used for the search campaign breakdown. The stats are identical, but this last conversion action down here at the bottom purchase listing for all website data is currently set up as a secondary conversion action. So here you'll see that in conversions, there's a zero, but then the all conversions column, there's a two because we've had two purchase setups. All other conversion actions have the exact same number in the conversions and all conversion column because those are set up as primary actions. Those are being used for bidding indicators for Google ads to prioritize. So they're counting the same in the conversions and all conversions column. So as a quick recap, you can see here primary versus secondary conversion action optimizations. Only primary conversions are going to be counted in the conversions column. Secondary conversions will not be included in that column, but both actions, regardless of what priority setting will show up in the all conversions column. Then when it comes to bidding or using any of Google's smart bidding strategies, which you can learn about in the video at the top of the screen right now, 
primary actions will be included in those real-time calculations to determine who to show your ad to, what type of bid to put in place, all of those different variables. Secondary actions will not be used for those bidding decisions. The only real presence that they have in the interface or in the ad platform itself, even on the back end, is that they will be included in the all conversions column. And because it's not used for anything other than reporting in the all conversions column, that might lead you to ask, why would you use secondary actions in the first place? And the answer, quite frankly, is pretty simple. They allow you to track actions that are of interest, but are not priorities. Things that you're not trying to optimize for, but things that are influential in your marketing decisions or certain KPIs that you are interested in, but might not be the primary focus of your account. So to help illustrate this, I want to give a couple of groups of examples of conversion actions that you might use for secondary priority optimization actions to help get you started thinking about what might make sense for your account. The first are going to be a group of actions that are too high in the buyer funnel, but still show some directional engagement of the customer with your brand. The first two are kind of grouped together, phone calls or content downloads. Both of those in a lead generation type of business could be a lead or they could not be a lead, depending on what type of gating you have on your content, how frequently phone calls tend to turn into leads, all that good stuff. In this example, neither one of these is confidently categorized as a lead, but it is something that lets us know how the user is engaging with our brand. The same thing could be said for the next two. Maybe somebody watches a video on your website or they subscribe to your YouTube channel. Neither one of these is a lead or a purchase in any respect, but they do tell you that people are engaging with certain pieces of content. They are engaging with your brand in an ongoing fashion by subscribing to your YouTube channel. But again, I wouldn't categorize either of these as conversion actions unless your campaign is set up to specifically optimize for video views or YouTube subscribers. And then lastly, this one might be hit or miss for some people, but if you have a physical store that people can go to, I often use the store visits or get directions conversion actions from Google Maps as secondary conversion actions. I personally have just not found that the conversion numbers in the platform match up too closely to what I think reality is. So I like to use these as directional indicators, but I would rather utilize a different conversion action like a sale on the website or somebody signing up for a newsletter to get a discount as a conversion action rather than the store visits or the get directions part. All of these actions are steps that are higher up the buyer funnel than a typical conversion action, but they can still help you understand what areas of your account are driving higher user engagement with your brand and help you make better informed decisions down the line, even if they're not being used in the conversions column or for automated bidding. The second group of actions is going to basically just be the flip side of this. These are typically only really going to count for any sort of lead generation account. My guess is that somebody makes a purchase from you on an e-commerce site, you're gonna wanna count every single one of those as a conversion action. But for some lead generation accounts that we work on, we utilize the lead stages beyond lead, so the MQL, SQL, opportunity, and closed customer as secondary conversion actions rather than conversions because the account is really just focused on driving the leads. It's the sales team's job to make them turn into the other types of lead status. So we're trying to optimize toward that lead goal, but it is helpful for us to see directly in Google ads, which of those leads are making their way through the buyer funnel and eventually coming through to purchase. Especially if there are really long lead cycles on those different stages, it can be helpful for us to go back and look at six months ago data and see which secondary conversion actions were taken without it interfering with the historical conversion performance, because then that just muddies the data ongoing. The same can be true for purchases with outsized values. One of the hesitations I get about the suggestion of the first one, longer lead stages, is that if my buyer cycle is short enough that the different lead stages and the purchases can be included in conversions because the data is real time enough that we can influence the bidding algorithm to optimize toward better leads, why wouldn't we do that? And while that strategy can work really well for some accounts, if you have lower volume on your leads, and one purchase with high value can skew the data heavily toward a certain type of lead over others, I would hesitate to use this. Let's say if over the course of a month, your account only gets 15 leads, 
and each of those leads is worth $100 to you, and you're utilizing that in the value setting of your conversion, but then one purchase is worth $50,000, if you're using that for bidding decisions, that can really skew the data toward that $50,000 conversion action as opposed to your $100 lead goal. So I'm not saying it's categorically a bad idea, but it can weight some conversions more than the other and skew some of those bidding decisions. Overall, using secondary conversion actions in Google Ads can be really valuable to you if you know what they do and if you're using them in the right way. If you have any additional questions about how to set these up, how they work, or any questions around the strategy of different conversion action priorities, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.